Morning. Glad you're in the house of the Lord. Those of you following us online, we're so glad that you're following us. When you came in, you should have picked up some notes. That way you can follow along uh, our message today. Amen. I want to speak to you tonight on the subject of uh, where is God when you need him? Have you ever asked yourself, God, where are you? Especially when I need you, Lord, more than any, any other time. Why does it seem that you're nowhere to be found? You know, if I were to ask you a, a question tonight, and if I were to ask you, where is God? Uh, some of you would say, well, Pastor, God's in heaven. Others of you would say, well, no, God's in my heart. Some people would say, no, God is among us. He's in, uh, when we get together, God is with us. But the Bible, you know what the Bible says? The Bible says that God is everywhere. In other words, David wrote these words in Psalm 139, verse 7 through 10. Notice what he wrote. He said, we can't escape the presence of God. He says, I, I can never escape from your spirit. I can never get away from your presence. If I go up to heaven, you are there. If I go down to the grave, you are there. If I ride the wings of the morning, if I dwell by the furthest oceans, even there your hand will guide me and your strength will support me. I want you to think about what David writes. You know what? David says, God, you're everywhere. You know what? God never has to go anywhere because he's already there. God's there wherever, you know, where is he at? He's in every single place. You know, Jonah, the prophet that ran away from God because he didn't want to go and preach to the Ninevites, you know what, he didn't want to do what God called him to do. He found that out real fast. You can't run from God. And anywhere, anywhere you go, God will be there. And it's not only that God, you know, uh, is everywhere, but he'll be there not only but to guide us and to support us and to be with us. In other words, what I, what I want to tell you tonight is that it doesn't matter where you're at in life. It doesn't matter what you're going through. God is there. And God is not only there, but he wants to encourage you. He wants to support you. He wants to help you. It was the prophet Jeremiah. When Jer Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 24, he wrote these words. He wrote, can anyone hide from me in a secret place? This is God speaking. Am I not everywhere in all the heavens and all the earth, says the Lord? In other words, even Jeremiah says there's no point in the universe where God is not. He's everywhere. Think, think about it. You know, God created everything. Not only did God create every, everything, but God created, the Bible says, time and space. And God stands outside of it. I want you to imagine God. Here's time, here's space, here's everything. God created it, and he's, not, he's in it, but he stands outside of it. You know, and he sees everything. That's why the Bible says he sees the, the end before the beginning. He sees everything. He's got, a, he's got a panoramic picture of everything, and that includes your life. Can I hear a good amen to that? And then the Bible says that one day God in his love, he sent his son Jesus Christ to step into our world, our time, our space, into our history to redeem us, to save us, to reveal what God is like, to tell us what God is all about. You know, you want to know what God is all about? Just look at the life of Jesus. Listen to the words of Jesus. Read in the Bible what Jesus had to say. You know, by the way, the fact that God is everywhere, theologians call that God's omnipresence. The omnipresence of God, and if you're following me in your notes, it simply means that God is everywhere. He's here. There's no point in the universe where God is not. Now, I know that's a hard concept for us to wrap our brains around because we're finite. We're limited. We can only be at one place at one time. You and I cannot be at two places at the same time. But God is everywhere at the same time. For God is no problem. And the reason why is because God is spirit. And he's everywhere. He's omnipresent. He is every single place, and he's with you, and he's with you right now. Now, that doesn't mean that God is everything. No, I'm, saying, I'm telling you God is everywhere. He's not everything. That's pantheism. Pantheism is that God's in everything. No. You know what? God is not in everything. He's everywhere, but the trees are not God. The rivers are not God. The flowers are not God. You know what? He's not everything, but he's everywhere. In the book of Acts, in chapter 17, in verse 28, it says these words. For in him we live and we move and we have our being. In other words, what the Bible says is that you cannot move apart from God. Do you know that you and I wouldn't exist if it wasn't for God? And it doesn't matter whether you're a Christian or you're an atheist or whatever. It's God who holds, you know what, you together and holds us together. He's a glue, you know what, of the universe. He's the, you know what, he's a cohesive force in all, all the universe. That's what God is. So the question is, Pastor Vic, if God is everywhere, then we need to be aware of it. You know, right now, you need to be aware of the presence of God. Let me try to explain that to you. Do you know that in this room right now, this room is filled up with radio waves. It's filled with radio waves and television waves. You don't see them, but they're there. 
In other words, you can tune in. You pull out your radio, you tune into them, and you'll capture the waves. You know what? You, you go to your TV, you mess with the antenna, and, and, and you'll capture the, what's flowing in this room, and you'll benefit from it. You'll hear things and you'll see things that you like, where those, they, those things come from? Where there are radio waves and television waves that are, that are running rampant. You know what? Not only in this sanctuary, but all over the place. And likewise, God. You know what? God is here. Sometimes we don't sense him. You know what? People say, well, I don't see him. But you don't see those radio waves. You don't see those television waves. And yet, they're there. But if you just learn to tune in to God, you will benefit. Your life will benefit. If you're able to experience the presence of God, now God is everywhere. I already told you that. He's here. He's with you. He's with you at all times. And if we could just find some way to tune in and to experience the presence of God, that would be powerful. You know what? God, God wants you to experience him. You know, God wants you to, to have a relationship with him because he's here. Now, that's very important because some of you are probably asking, well, what, what, what does that matter? What does it matter that God is everywhere and that he's here and, and that I can experience his presence? What difference will that make in my life? It'll make a lot of difference in your life. It'll make a difference when you're lonely. It'll make a difference when you're worried to death. It'll make a difference when you're tempted. It'll make a difference when you're discouraged. In other words, God's presence in your life makes a huge difference. That's why this is important. You know, I'm not just trying to give you a theological discussion of the um, omnipresence of God. I want you to understand that this God that is everywhere, it's very important. We benefit. Something good happens when we understand that. So let's talk about it. Because the first benefit of knowing the presence of God is when you're lonely. And if you're writing notes when I'm lonely, I just need to remember that God is with me. God is with me. You know, I need to remind myself often that God is my companion. I have to remind myself often I'm not alone, what, you know, in this life and, and, and what I'm going to. David, the psalmist, in Psalm 25, verse 16, he wrote these words, Lord, turn to me and be gracious to me, for I am lonely and I am afflicted. You know, we live at a time where there are a lot of lonely people. There are a lot of afflicted people. Do you know that we're living in a time where there are more lonely people than ever before? And the reason why that's true is that there's all kinds of loneliness. You know, some surveys reveal that around 60% of the people in the United States right now report feeling lonely on a regular basis. And that's devastating from a health uh, perspective. You know, it's crazy that 60% of Americans say, many times in my life I find myself feeling lonely. You know, sadly, we, we, we get lonely from time to time. All of us do. And then, of course, COVID came around and social distancing and self-isolation. You know what? It made it worse. You know, before COVID, England, the country of England, was experiencing an, a loneliness epidemic. In other words, in England, large numbers of people were, were reporting that they were lonely and they were depressed and they were, you know what, and they were uh, just having crazy thoughts. So you know what the government of England did is that they hired a minister of loneliness. They, they put a cabinet position in their parliament and the job of this person was to handle the issue of loneliness in, in England. And that was his job. Why are people lonely? What is the answer to loneliness? In other words, they took it serious because they realized in England, it was a health epidemic prior to COVID. In America, we're realizing that is true even today. But you know what's interesting about this idea of loneliness? We live today in a, in a hyper-connected world. We're probably living in a world more connected than ever before. You know, more, more means of communicating than ever before, and we're lonelier than ever before. We have more social media followers than real-life friends. It's easier to swap digital messages with strangers on the other side of the world than it is to sit down and have an actual conversation with a real person. You know what? We, it's, it's funny. We're more connected than ever before with anyone we want to be connected with, people that we don't even know, and yet we're lonelier than ever before. You know, I remember when we talked about loneliness, traditionally loneliness, you know what, was an affliction of the elderly, old people that were in their home and no one would visit them or they were in a convalescent home and no one would go by but no, right now, all ages are being lonely. Let me give you some statistics. Here are the latest. As of February 2023, the latest figures, uh, statistics of surveys on loneliness. Here's what they say. Generation Z, which are those people from the ages of 18 to 22, is the loneliest generation 
in America today, 79% reporting feelings of loneliness, according to a study by, done by Cigna Health. Millennials, ages 23 to 37, also report high levels of loneliness, with 71% saying they feel lonely at times. You know, social scientists, people that study this stuff, are warning America, there's a warning out there, the effects of loneliness, this loneliness epidemic that hit England several years before the pandemic is coming to America. And you know what's interesting? This is what they say, it affects our health. As a matter of fact, if you're following your notes, they liken it to the equivalent of smoking 15 cigarettes a day. That's how it affects their life. Imagine you smoking, what, I don't know how many cigarettes, those of you that smoke, how many cigarettes in a pack? I don't know. Oh, good, none of you smoke, so you couldn't answer that. Good, good for you, good for you. But you know, we, we, don't, uh, we don't necessarily need to be physically alone to be lonely. Loneliness doesn't mean that there's no one around. What's hard to understand is that a lot of us have people around us all the time, but we're lonely. You know, there are, there are relationships, toxic relationships, you know what, that can leave you feeling incredibly lonely. Can I hear a good amen to that? But you know, as we talk about loneliness, loneliness affects people in different ways. And for this reason, scientists, social scientists have identified four distinct types of loneliness. Psychologists and therapists, this is what they have found. There's emotional loneliness, there's social loneliness, there is situational loneliness, and there's chronic loneliness. Now you say, well, what are those? Well, emotional loneliness is not circumstantial. In other words, it's not because of what's happening outside of me. Emotional loneliness comes from within. Inside, I'm just lonely. You know what? It doesn't matter how many people are around me. It doesn't matter what all is going on. Inside, I feel very lonely. That's emotional loneliness. I feel sad. You know what? And for, for many reasons that happens. There is situational loneliness. Situational loneliness can result from being in circumstances that, that makes difficult uh, friendships difficult. For example, you moved away. You're away from home. You're in a country where you don't speak the language. You don't know the culture. Or, or you might just be around people that just don't care. You know, and that's situational loneliness. And then there is, you know what, there is what they call social loneliness. Social loneliness is experienced by, by those who have problems in social situations. You know, you know who, who are the people that experience social loneliness? People that are shy. People that are socially awkward. People who have a, a low sense of self-esteem. It makes their capacity to build relationships and have friendships, you know what, very difficult. So you have social loneliness. You have people that, you know, they might be around a group, but they go to the corner and they hide and they don't, nobody, nobody looks for them. That's why I tell you, when you guys come to church, seek out people. Don't just greet the same three people all the time. You know what? Have your eyes open and look around. Well, who's over there in the corner probably wondering, you know what? Does anybody love me? Do I matter? I mean, am I loved here? I, I don't want ever anyone coming to Living Word and not feel loved, not feel that they're important. And you know, just, you know what makes them feel that? Just someone walking over to them. You know what? Because maybe they're shy. Maybe they're awkward. Maybe they don't know what to do and saying, hey, good morning. How are you? My name is, you know, glad you're here today. And start, start up a conversation. Don't force it, but, but talk to them. Because there's a lot of people today that are socially lonely. And then there are what is called chronic loneliness. You know what chronic loneliness is? It, it's a term that's used to describe those who have been lonely for so long that it's become a way of life. They are loners. They, have, they live a very lonely life. And sometimes these people that are chronic lonely, it's because, you know, you know the, the, the death of a loved one the death of a, a spouse or a parent or a friend. You know, uh, sometimes there's loneliness when you have to go to a new school or, you know, there's loneliness when your husband or your wife doesn't listen to you. You know, or the loneliness of sometimes feeling that no one understands you, no one cares about understanding you. You know what's even interesting? They have identified a loneliness of success. In other words, life at the top. You are very successful. You're at the top of your game, but you're the only one there and you're very lonely. So there are all kinds of loneliness. And you will be sometimes lonely in life. Some of you right now are saying, Pastor, right now I'm going through a very lonely time in my life. But God doesn't want you to experience that or feel that all the time. You know, at the very beginning, the Bible says when God created Adam and Eve, Adam, and he saw Adam, he said, it's not good that Adam's alone. I will make him a help me. And alone and loneliness is not the same thing. You know, alone means you have no one around. Loneliness is an inside thing. Doesn't matter who's around. Inside you feel no one's around. And listen to me, God doesn't want you to be alone. 
But it's something everybody faces at times. So what do you do? What do you do when you have moments of loneliness, uncontrollable loneliness? And sometimes you feel, I can't do anything about it. And sometimes all you do is cry. And sometimes all you do is wallow in your, in your, in your sorrow and your pity and what's wrong with me? Why, why doesn't anyone want to hang around with me? Well, I'll tell you why, what's important. You know what? God doesn't want you to be that way. And the presence of God, when you feel lonely, I'll tell you why the presence of God is important. Is because he wants you to know that you're not alone. You know what? He wants you to remember that he's always with you. God is always with you. Can I hear a good amen to that? You know, the writer to the Hebrews in chapter 13 of Hebrews verse 5 said, God has said, never will I leave you and never will I forsake you. In other words, God says, in me, you have a constant companion. I will always, I will never forsake. In other words, the word forsake is abandon you. You know, sometimes we think God has abandoned us because we're not good enough or because I messed up. Listen, God says, I will never, ever, ever, ever abandon you. You don't have to worry about me saying, I'm tired of you. I want nothing to do with you. Sometimes we talk ourselves into that. Sometimes we motivate ourselves into believing that. But you know what? That is not of God. God says, I will always be, you, be with you. So when I'm lonely, I need to remember that God is my companion because he says, I'm always with you. He never asks you to do anything by yourself. You know, David, the writer of the Psalms, they're beautiful Psalms, and many times he writes because he's lonely. Over there in Psalm 16, 1 and 2, notice, this is beautiful. David says, keep me safe, O God. I've run for dear life to you. I say to God, be my Lord. Without you, nothing makes sense. In other words, David says, Lord, I, I need your presence, and I need to be aware of your presence. And God, I want your presence, because I have found out that without your presence, nothing makes sense. Nothing in this world matters. Nothing makes sense. So the first benefit of recognizing the presence of God is that God's presence helps you make sense of things. It cheers you up. It reminds you you're not alone. God is with you. And I want to tell you today, God is with you regardless of what you're going through. Why don't you tell your neighbor, God is with me and he's with you. To tell your neighbor right now, remind them. If they're asleep, wake them up. I know it's late and I know sometimes we come tired. God is with you. You're not alone. God's by your side. He will never abandon you. But you, another time you need to know why, why God's presence is important is when you're worried. When you're worried, God is my assurance. When I'm worried, God is the one who comes and assures me. You know, Isaiah 43, verse 2, he writes these words. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. This is God speaking. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, nor shall the flames scorch you. In other words, sometimes we're worried because of what's going on around us. You know, I re when, I read, when I read Isaiah 43, it reminds me of the, of the three Hebrew men, Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You know, who are thrown into a fiery furnace. And you know what? They're walking in the fire. And, and the Bible says that when someone looks inside, they're, they're walking around and they're not walking around alone. There's another person walking with them and it's God Almighty. And the Bible says that when they're taken out of the fiery furnace, their robes weren't burned. Nothing was burned. Everything was intact. You know, and because God was with them. You know, some of you right now are going through difficult moments. Some of you just got out of difficult moments. Some of you are about to enter into some difficult moments and you don't even know it. Because that's the way life is. Life is filled with challenges. Life is filled with difficulties. And, and I wish we could predict when that's going to happen. But none of us can predict what we're going to face. But one thing we can be certain of, that God's going to be with you through all of that. You know what? When I'm worried, you know what? God gives me assurance. God is my confidence. God is in me, you know what, the presence of God reminds me, it doesn't matter what life may throw my way, what God may allow in my life, I'm going to make it, I'm going to get through it with the help of God. Can I hear a good amen? You're going to get through it. You know, so if you're worried, and there's a lot of things that worry us today, God says, you know, be assured, be confident. I am with you. You know, in the story of Moses, God one day told Moses, you know, I want you to lead the people of Israel out of Egypt. They've been in slavery for 400 years. I want you to go to Pharaoh, the most powerful man on the face of the earth. You know what? And I want you to go and tell him, let my people go. And of course, Moses freaks out, right? He just starts having anxiety. Lord, are you, you're, you're crazy. You know what? All these excuses, God, I can't do that. I'm nothing. I don't know how to speak, you know, and all, all this stuff, you know, you made a mistake. Uh, I don't, I, I, I can't, I mean, you can just imagine all the stuff he told him. And you know, God only says one thing. God gives one answer to all of his excuses, and it's this, I will be with you. My presence will go with you. You will not 
be alone. Now, I don't know how much comfort that brought to Moses, but it encouraged him to go and talk to Pharaoh. But I want you to know today, God says to you, you know what, all the excuses, all the anxiety, God says, I want you to remember, I will be with you. You can be sure of that. You can be assured. You can have confidence in my presence. My presence will go with you. Right now, the presence of God is with you in all that's happening in your life. Maybe you don't believe it. I want you to believe it. I want to encourage you. I want you to believe it and get it inside of you. Psalm 16, David writes these words in verse 8. I know the Lord is always with me. I will not be shaken, for he is right beside me. No wonder my heart is glad and I rejoice. My body rests in in safety. In other words, the psalmist found not only joy and happiness and gladness, but he found rest knowing I'm not alone. You know, when you don't understand the presence of God and when you don't experience the presence of God, you don't rest. You know what? You're constantly, you know, filled with tension and anxiety. When you don't understand the presence of God with you, and if you don't know how to enjoy the presence of God, you're never, ever going to enjoy, you know, what life and God. But God says, it's up to you. It's your choice. You know what David writes, and he says, I'm always aware of the Lord's presence. I want to ask you, are you aware of the Lord's presence? Honestly, I am not always aware of his presence. And you know why sometimes I'm not aware of the presence of God? Because I focus more on what I'm going through than focusing on the God that's with me. I focus more on the negative than I focus on the truth of what God says in his word. You know, but when I stop and I reflect and I look at the results and I I see how I made it through it, I realize, you know what, he was near me. You know, and and he was with me. And nothing could shake me. It rattled me. You know what, it tossed me around, but it it did not destroy me. Because his presence is that powerful. So listen, when I'm lonely, God's presence cheers me up. But when I'm worried, worried, God's presence calls me down. It's a stress reliever. And I have confidence because I know what, what Paul says. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. With him, listen, with him, you and I can handle anything. Can I hear a big amen to that? Amen. By the way, that confidence is not positive thinking. It's not psychology. It comes from knowing that God is with me. It's the Bible. When I'm lonely, I have someone with me all the time. I need to remember that. You know what? I have assurance. I can be confident. I can face life knowing this is not the end. I'm going to get through this season. I'm going to be okay. The the, the other reason why you need to know about the presence of God and experience it is because you're going to face temptation. And when you face temptation, God will be your strength. God will strengthen you. He is ready to help you when you face. Because in this life, we're all going to face temptation. And temptation sometimes comes as a test to see what we're made of, but sometimes temptation comes to derail us and to throw us off track, to get us to take our focus and and sin and go against what God's word says. But God is your strength. Look at what Paul writes to the Corinthians in 1 Corinthians 10, verse 13. He says this, he says, the temptations in your life are no different from what others experience. God is faithful. And he will not allow the temptation to be more than you can stand. And when you are tempted, he will show you a way out so that you can endure. I love this verse. And I'll tell you why I love this verse. There's three things that he says that are very important. He says temptations are common. In other words, what you're going through, you and everybody else has got. You're not the only one. Sometimes we feel we're the only ones going through this. No, everybody goes through temptation. Not at the same time. Thank God, right? But we all go through them. It's common. In other words, it's common, meaning it's, it's usual. It's not unusual. It's not weird. It's part of life. They're common to men. Listen, we all have the same problems. Sometimes we think, well, I'm the only one. I have unique. No, but you don't. We all have the same tro- problems in being tempted. By the way, it's not a sin. Giving in to temptation is what the sin is. Sometimes we freak out because why am I facing temptation? Because you're a human being. You have a body. You're normal. You know what? But you don't have to give into it. And then it says, you know what? Not only is it common, but God is faithful. God is with me when I'm being tempted. In other words, God is there. And, and what that means, that means several things. It means God is there to help you. But it also means God is there watching you. Now, I, I want you to know that's important. Because when God is watching you, that makes a difference on how you're handling temptation, right? Right? It's like when you were in school and you wanted to cheat, but the teacher was right there, you wouldn't cheat, right? You would sort of go like this and then go like that, right? Remember? Because uh, you didn't want to be caught by the teacher. And God is watching. In other words, God knows exactly the struggle that's going on in your mind. He sees it coming before you see it coming. 
And, 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 and you know what? He's there. And because he's there, you know what? I don't want to disappoint him. Sometimes we think, well, nobody's watching. Nobody will know I've done this. No one will know I'm unethical, I'm being illegal, I'm being immoral. No one will know. But you know what? They will know. Eventually everything comes out. But I'll tell you who knows immediately. God knows. God is there. God is watching you. In other words, God says, you know what? I, I, I see it. Amen. And you know, it's like, it's like, you know, it's like those of you that have teenagers, daughters, especially the boyfriend comes over while well, you are there watching. They don't mess with your daughter. But you go away and who knows what happens, right? And sometimes that's why dads were like there watching them all the time, right? Because we know the presence of us as parents is very powerful. Well, I want you to know the presence of God is very powerful. And then the third thing he says, you know, there when you're, when you're facing, you know what? God has prepared an escape for me to get out of it. He's already preparing an escape route for me to get out of it. That's good news. In other words, you know what that means? You don't have to give in to temptation. You don't have to succumb. People say, well, Pastor, I, I couldn't help it. Yes, you could have helped. God gave you a way out. You just chose not to take it. God spoke to you. Holy Spirit says, you don't have to do that. Why are you doing that? You know, because I want to, Lord, just this one time, God, and then I won't do it again. No, you had a way out. You had the strength, but you chose not to take the escape. You chose to walk into the fire. Amen. Anyway, Pastor, doesn't it say that he will watch over you through the fire, but not that type of fire? You know, the Bible says that every time you and I go through temptation, the Holy Spirit is there. God is there. You know what he's doing? He's giving us advice. He's speaking to us. And one of the things that he's speaking to you, and if you haven't experienced this, next time that you're being tempted, next time pay attention. And you're going to hear the voice of God. You're going to hear the Holy Spirit that says, are you sure you want to do that? Is that, you think that's what God has called you to do? No. And you're going to have to fight with the Holy Spirit. So, you know, it doesn't matter what temptation you face this week, next week, at home, at work, at church, wherever. God is there. He's watching. You know what? It's common. You know what? God is observing, and God has already given you a way out. Take the way out. Amen. Amen. Do what Joseph did. Sometimes you got to just run. That was the way out. Just run. Get away. You know? And uh, look at what it says in Job 13, verse 27. It says, you, God, keep a close watch on all my paths. Notice he says, you're close. You know why he says that? Because he knows God's everywhere. He sees everything. There's nothing that escapes his gaze. Psalm 139, 11 and 12, notice. It says, I could ask the darkness to hide me and the light around me to become night. But even in darkness, I cannot hide from you. To you, the night shines as bright as day. Darkness and light are the same to you. In other words, the psalmist says, you know, I've learned that God has night vision. Amen. You know, he sees everything. Not just in the day, but at night. You know, the Bible says that men love darkness rather than the light because their deeds are evil. But the Bible says God sees everything and he can see through the darkness. Amen. And the Bible says that, you know, as you're being tempted, you know what? Your God is your strength and God wants to help you. Control yourself. Amen. I, I, a couple of, every once in a while, uh, I, I, well, let me say it. Let me, I, let me tell you what I want to tell you. And uh, around Christmas time, we, we, the seniors, we go to lunch for Christmas, and we go to a buffet. Amen. And uh, if you've ever been to a buffet, the temptation is to get the plate and pile it up, right? Some do. Some of you do. But every once in a while, I'm trying to pile up, and I notice someone is looking. I say, oh, I better not pile it up because they're going to criticize. And I'm saying, what for do I have to pile it up? I can come back as many times as I want, right? But have you noticed when someone is watching, you're a little bit more careful? Some of you say, I don't care who's watching me at the buffet. I want to serve it as high as I want. Amen. But God's presence. I, I, I'm more alert to do things that I'm supposed to do when I'm aware of God's presence. Romans 14, 12 says, yes, each of us will give a personal account to God. In other words, God's watching, God's listening because he's there. And one day we will get, the Bible says everything done in secret will be made public. Everything that you thought nobody knew is going to be shouted on the rooftops, and not only in heaven, but here in this life. I've been a pastor 42 years, and you know, you know what's interesting about a, being a pastor and dealing with people during the best times of their life and the most difficult times of their life? And some of the most difficult times of their life are bad decisions that they made that they thought would never come to light, and they always come to light. Everything you thought no one would know, people know. Be aware of that. And when you're facing temptation, I want you to know that God is your strength. You don't have to succumb to it. You don't have, you, you know, you don't have to give in to it. You have to fight it, but you can say no with the help of God because God is with you. In your own strength, you can. But in God's strength, all things are possible. Can I hear a good amen? 
And then the other reason why you need to know uh, God's presence and experience it is because when you're discouraged. You know, when you're discouraged, God's presence, God is your encourager. He's my encourager. Psalm 34, 18 says, the Lord is near to those who are discouraged. He saves those who have lost all hope. Listen, if you're discouraged, one thing I can say with all confidence, God is with you. You know, I like one translation. This verse, it says, the Lord, is, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted. Is your heart breaking? The Bible says the Lord is near you. So you might ask the question, where is God when it hurts? Where is God when this is going on? Where is God? Because I don't feel him. And if he was around, why would he allow it? Well, let me tell you the answer to that. He was right there with you. He never left you. He feels your hurt. He feels your discouragement. He knows when you're not making it. He knows when you're frustrated. Some of you right now are going through some rough times and you're ready to give up. You don't know if you want to keep on going in, in the direction you're going. And I don't know what you're, you're going through, but whatever it is, God is there with you. And God says, if you let me, I will help you. I will be your encourager. I will encourage you all the step of the way. You know, his presence is there. You know, he wants to be your comforter. The Bible says he's our very present help in times of trouble. Psalm 99 says, the Lord is a shelter for the oppressed, a refuge in times of trouble. You're in trouble right now. You're discouraged. Run to the encourager, the Holy Spirit, God, God's presence in our lives. Jesus told the disciples these words before he left, after he's going to be killed that night. And in verse 14 of John, in verse 16, he says, the Father will send you another comforter who will never leave you, and he is the Holy Spirit. God's presence with you. You know, no matter what you're going through, God will go through it with you. God's not too busy. God will never say to you, oh, you know what, I got too many issues. I got too many problems right now. I'm handling too many situations. You know what, get in line or just find somewhere else. You know what, come back later. I'm busy. God will never do that to you. God will always, God will always walk with you. You know, and, and I, I've seen all kinds of reactions of people as we, as we walk through life. You know, I, I see people's reactions at funerals, when I visit the hospitals, during times of crisis that catches us by surprise. You know, never could have thought that would happen, never planned it, never could have predicted it. And I'm, I, I'll tell you what I've learned. People that know the Lord, they handle those situations better than people who don't know the Lord. Many times when I'm around people that don't know the Lord and don't have faith, I ask myself, how do people make it? How do they get through life without the presence of God and the awareness of God? You know, how, how, do, they, how do they get through it? You know, they, they're, they're, they're torn up, they're, they're beat up, they're, you know, they're, uh, they, they don't get over it as quickly as people who know God and the presence of God. They hurt more deeply and more severely than those who know that God is with them. When you know that God is with you, everything, everything becomes possible. Even the most difficult things at life. So there will be times in your life where you say, you know what, Pastor, I feel defeated. I'm crushed. You know what, I've been let down. Everyone has let me down. Well, listen, that's when you need to understand more than ever before God's presence. God's presence in your life. He will never let you down. Because the presence of God not only cheers me up when I'm lonely and calms me down, when I'm worried and helps me out when I'm tempted, but it sees me through all situations when I feel discouragement. You know what? The presence of God is what gives me the power to keep on keeping on. It's the presence of God that renews my strength. It's the presence of God that lifts my heavy heart and my heavy burden. That's what God's presence can do for your life. But listen, you have to tune in. You know, the key to keep on keeping on and overcoming discouragement is walk in the presence of God. Enjoy the presence of God. Practice the presence of God. You know what? Recognize the presence of God. And of course, the question that has to be asked is, how do I do that? How do I practice? How do I recognize? How do I enjoy the presence of God? Well, let me give you four things real quick in yours. Number one, first thing you got to do is invite Jesus Christ, you know what, in your life if you haven't already done so. You know, when you come to the Lord Jesus Christ, he promises to put his spirit in you to never leave you or never forsake you. And it doesn't matter what life may throw your way. You know, it doesn't matter when you have God's presence in you, because here's what happens. You have pressure on the outside, but when you have equal pressure or more pressure on the inside, it's able to combat the pressure from the outside. You're able to cope better. 
when you got pressure going this way, but there's nothing fighting it on the inside, it overwhelms you. The presence of God is amazing. It fills you. You know what? It equalizes the pressure from the outside. Because when people don't have the presence of God and don't know the presence of God and pressure comes from the outside, you know what they do? They eat more than what they're supposed to. They drink more than what they're supposed to. They do drugs to sort of alleviate the pain. But listen, when you invite Jesus Christ into your life, you experience God. And that is an amazing thing to experience God. Here's the second thing I want to encourage you to do. If you're going to encourage, practice the presence of God, sometimes you guys just be quiet, be still. You know what? Close your mouth. Don't talk. Don't get hysterical. Don't get out of control. Psalm 46.10 says, be still and know that I am God. In other words, God says sometimes we just got to be quiet. Quiet yourself down. And that, you know, several times a day, quiet yourself. You know, I, I'm, I'm a very quiet person. I'm a very reserved. That's easy for me to do. And many times a day, you know what? I just quiet myself down and, and I tell God, God, I realize that you're present with me right now. I realize, God, that you're here, you're within me, you're with me. And you know what I do at that moment? I tune into the presence of God. And I want to encourage you, take breaks during the day. Quiet yourself down. You know, go to the lunchroom, go to your backyard, go to your bedroom. And recognize that no matter where you are, God's there with you. You know what? Turn on the tune. Tune, tune yourself to the presence of God. And say, Lord, thank you that you're here with me today. James 4, 8 says, draw near to God and he'll draw near to you. You know, as you tune in to him, he'll, you'll begin to be aware of his presence like never before. Here's the third thing I want to encourage you to do. Talk to God about everything. One of the ways that you enjoy the presence of God is talking to him. You can pray about anything. Ask him for help. That's why the Bible says pray without ceasing. Pray continually. In other words, that talks about maintaining a, a continual conversation with God. You know what? Go out in the morning for a walk and say, Lord, this is a beautiful day. Thank you for it. Get in your car and say, Lord, thank you. That I, you know what? I need to put gas. God, help me. Lord, I, I don't know. I have enough money. You know what? God, help me get some gas. As you're driving, you know, just see things and say, Lord, I'm so thankful for everything. Talk to him about everything. That's what it means to pray without ceasing. The Bible says in Psalm 62, verse 8, it says, trust him in all times and pour out your heart to him. You know, talk to the Lord all the time. You know what, I, sometimes I'm, I'm in my office, I'm studying, I'm, you know, getting ready for a meeting or this or that, and I just start, start talking to the Lord, and I just, you know what, start thanking Him. Thanking Him for everything. I, when I think about His blessings, and I think His good, you know, because I, I don't focus, I'm not one who focuses on the negative. I, I'm, I, I, just, I just have been blessed to be one who focuses on, on the positive, and any negatives are just challenges that I'm excited to see what God's going to do, Amen. Because I, I run into people who say, well, Pastor, you know, when I pray, I feel like my prayers never get above the ceiling. Well, that's okay. God's below the ceiling too. He's not just above the ceiling. That's not a problem. He's right next to you. As a matter of fact, he not only is next to you, he reads your mind the moment you think about it. He knows what you're going to say before you even say it or think it. You just think it. He knows it. So you can talk to him about anything. Some people ask, well, Pastor, can I talk to him about anything? Any way, any way. The way you will talk to anybody else. Talk to the Lord every day. And here's the fourth thing. If you're going to experience the presence of God, develop the habit of praise. You know, praise means to thank God for who he is and for what he's done for you. That's praise. Psalm 104, there's a lot of psalms. Enter his gates with thanksgiving, enter his courts with praise. In other words, praise the Lord. Tune in. That's what it means. You know, nothing's going to help you more than become aware of God and his presence in your life. And the faster you learn how to pray and praise him and, you know, and, and give your life to Christ and all those things I just mentioned to you, you know what, the sooner you're going to experience the presence of God. You know, because God is everywhere, you can praise him everywhere. You can praise God in your car. You know what, you can sing some of the songs you sing here on Sundays or Wednesdays. And I don't know about you, but sometimes I, I, my, my radio is always on, on a Christian station. That doesn't mean because I'm so spiritual. I just love listening to messages and listening to songs. And, and there was a time, and once in a while, I turned it to my oldies. Amen. I love oldies too. Amen. I love 60s music. You know, 50s music. But I tell you, when, I, when I'm in my car and, you know, some of those songs, I start singing along and you can sense the presence of God. You know, you don't have to wait for Sunday morning. You don't have to wait for Wednesday night. People say, oh, I feel so good when I go to church on Sunday. Well, you can feel that good in your car, in your home, in your bedroom. 
I want you to know that when you experience the presence of God, it opens up a whole new life for you. It just sort of makes it amazing. Wow, God's with me. It cheers you up. It calms you down. It helps you out. It helps you have strength to keep on going. So I want to say to you as I end, it, no matter where you're at, no matter what's going on, no matter what you're facing right now, God is there. I don't care if it's school. I don't care if it's vacation. I don't care if it's in the traffic jam. You know what? God is there. The other day I was watching TV and two guys were fighting there. The cameras are watching them there in the middle of the street. I was thinking, Lord, I hope that's nobody from Living Word. Amen. What a disaster that would be. But sometimes you're driving and that, I mean, you can, you can lose your peace. Amen. But when you know that God is with you, you stop, you're quiet, you say, Lord, you're here. He is. He's here tonight. So for those of you who are tired or discouraged or frustrated or you're hurting or you're afraid, you're worried, you're sick, you're depressed, I want to say to you, God is with you if you're a believer. You're not alone. Would you bow your heads and close your eyes? You know what? As every head is bowed, every eye is closed, I, I remind you God's presence is here tonight, whether you're aware of it or not. And... Uh, he wants you to know him. He wants you to experience him. He wants you to feel his love. You know, earlier I said no one should come to living word and not feel love. But no one should come to living word and not feel the love of God. He wants you to feel his love. So why don't you tell him tonight, God, I'd like to know your presence in my life. You know what I heard tonight? Your presence. I, 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 I long for that. Then God says to you, just be quiet then. You know, take a deep breath and relax and tell God what's on your mind, your aches, your pains, you know, your, whatever it may be. Talk to the Lord. He wants to hear from you. And if you've never done that, if you've never have invited Jesus Christ to come into your life, that's where it starts. The Bible says that Jesus said, I knock at the door of your life, and if you open it up, I will come into your life, and I will live with you and you with me. You know, when God's in your life, one of the things you're going to find yourself doing is thanking him for all the things he's done for you. I mean, there's a lot of things. He's with you. And he's with you not only in the good things, but in the difficult things. And he wants to help you. He wants to cheer you up. He wants to do it today, whatever you're going through. Father, thank you for being with us. Lord, help us this next week or the remainder of the week to sense your presence and realize that there is no point where we will be, where, where we can say the Lord is not with me because you're with us all the time. Thank you for the confidence and the comfort that it gives us. Thank you for all the help. And Father, right now I pray, God, Lord, I pray a blessing upon those that might be going through some difficult times. And Father, feeling lost and feeling so alone and feeling, God, that nobody cares. And yet they're sitting here tonight. And God, what a great opportunity for your spirit to grab them and get a hold of them. And Father, remind them, God, that you love them. And Lord, remind them they're not alone. All of us need that reminder. And I wish our words, I wish, Lord, our songs, I wish everything we did, Lord, when we come together would accomplish that. But I realize it's not going to be accomplished if your presence and your spirit, God doesn't do it. Lord, you have ways of doing things we can never, ever, ever accomplish. So I commit your people to you today. I commit the sick. I ask that you heal them in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, that as the word goes forward, that shackles would be broken, bondages would be broken, hearts would be changed. I pray, Lord, that healing would flow, God, in the lives of your people. I pray, Lord, that crazy thinking would be straightened out, Lord. Lord, and uh, irrational thoughts would be brought to light, God, and they would realize this is not what God wants for me. I pray, Lord, families would be restored. I pray for marriages. God, that are struggling, that the beginning of the healing process, reconciliation process would start, Lord, as we commit ourselves to you. Father, bless your people today. I ask you and I pray this in Jesus' name. And God's people said, amen. amen. Listen, my desire is the Lord would bless you and keep you. The Lord would pour out his blessing upon you. I pray you experience his peace and his love. I pray that you would be aware of his presence more than ever before. He's there with you. You don't earn it, deserve it. He's there because he loves you. See you Sunday. God bless you. We love you. Go in peace. Greet one another. Amen.